Man, got around. Oh, gee, some back here. And today I'm going to talk to you guys and tell you some fascinating and interesting stories that will typify glory and victory as you understand what it takes to be one of the few, one of the strong, one of the proud men who are willing to stand and fight and even die to protect what you believe in, guys. Hey, today is going to be a real banger. I had a lot to think about. One of my value subscribers sent me a video that I'm going to react to, guys. So I'm going to invoke the YouTube fair use policy. So I don't get any copyright strikes. So my monetization has been going down and down. I've been part of the shadow banning of YouTube, bro. And that's what I'm going to start putting more, way more content on my Patreon. I'm starting to wait, move away from YouTube as I prepare for my hip surgery. That's what happens when you be a savage. Savage things happen to you. You got to be a savage to deal with them. But without further ado, I'm going to get into the topic of today's video, which is tough street, tough guy gets stabbed, beat up, and raped in prison because there are no guns in prison. I think that's one of the main things, man, I'll be trying to inculcate or to and just into you youngsters' minds, man. I think it's very important we talk about this because when I was on the street, dude, I got my street cred from shooting a lot of people, man, and using explosives, man, and grenades and mortars and automatic weapons and all that, pump shot, automatic pump shotguns, all that. So the philosophy was when I was on the street, all dude is superiorly armed so we have to bow down to his agenda. But here's what I want to tell you guys. It's very important you understand. In any situation, it's not the size of the fight. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the... No, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. I was strung out, man, on crack cocaine from a deployment I did. And I just felt my life was over. So I was like basically a dead man walking. I didn't care. I was going to do what I wanted to do. And I was willing to give my life in order to enforce my will upon another person. This is what I found about most hard dudes. I'm saying most. I can't say all. Because I had a conversation with somebody I care about just on the phone. And they were telling me about, there. oh, there's other savages and assassins and crazy people and strong people and people to train. I want to tell you guys an honest situation here. I've been fortunate that I haven't ran into anybody who's just like me because maybe I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Fortunately for me, the people I ran into thought they were savages. In their mind, they thought they were savages. They believed they were savages, but when faced with a true savage, they understood that they're not ready to go to that level. So I wanted to share this with you guys because when I was incarcerated, the first thing that the gangsters would say to me, the gang members and the drug dealers and and the mafioso dudes, this is the first thing they tell me when we were incarcerated. Hey, OG, sit back. Yeah, you was bad on the street with all your weapons and explosives, but ain't no weapons, ain't no guns in prison. And I was like, man, my body's a weapon, bro. This is what I want to tell you youngsters, man. I appreciate you come from an impoverished environment and you feel like, you know, you got to be hard and tough and strong and, you know, you got to be savage and shoot people and carry guns and kidnap people and beat them and torture them and all that. I got it. All I'm trying to say is just learn from me, have an insurance policy because one of my value subscribers is like, hey, yo, just shut back. You wasting your time because these dudes you're talking about prison and the dudes that's listening is you ready to go to prison. They ain't listening to you, man. They ain't even care because they just doing what they do. I was understand, but I think there's some youngsters that are smart enough to know you should have an insurance policy. It's like even if you're a gangster, you should drive around with car insurance. Why? Because if somebody hits your car unexpectedly, you got your car insurance, you can get it fixed or get another car, right? You should drive around with life insurance and medical insurance. Why? Because if something happens to you unexpectedly, you go to the doctor, man, and you can get hooked up and taken care of, right? If you, unfortunately, you was dumb enough to come out to Vegas and try to do harm to me, and you leave this earth, and then your family's covered with your life insurance. So it's important to have all kinds of insurances. This is what I learned when I had to pay the popo or the police when I was in deep in the drug game. And this is what the cartel told me. You have to pay the local police in order for you to continue to do transactions. So I was like this, if I got to pay the police, what I learned is you have to have a lawyer or retainer because it's not if 
But when you go to court, you got a lawyer who's right there. That's why I was able to bail out so many times. I bailed out like three, four, five times before I got the last one, which I couldn't bail out because there was too many bodies being found. I couldn't bail out on that because murder is a different thing, you know, involuntary or not, you're not a bailable offense. So without further ado, I want to invoke the, uh, the YouTube fair use policy because I got a banger I want to share with you guys, man. We're going to get to the topic of today's video. Let's begin this, this trip down the rabbit hole, guys. Here we go. Of everywhere. Five times in my ass. Not the king of fun, the king of everything, man. I ain't the king of Philly. I'm the king of everywhere. Five times in my ass. Okay, so for those of you who are familiar, this dude, he was the Philly King Kong, and he said, I'm not just the king of Philly. I'm the king of everywhere. And just to let you soft dudes know who think you hard, because I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been hit with baseball bats and pipes. I've had my teeth knocked out, my jaw broke, my nose broke, my occipital lobe broken, hands broken, feet broken, legs broken, shoulders broken, collar, clavicles broken, ribs broken. I'm just sharing with you, bro. If you ain't got battle scars, this will scare you. But I have remember this one dude, and, and hopefully if he's alive, you know, God bless you if not. But his name was Half Dead. And he used to rob drug dealers like me. So what happened was I became a big time drug dealer. He wanted to rob me one day. So I didn't know we was both having sex with the same young lady. So I go into Marina, I'll go into Marina Complex, Marina, uh, California to an apartment complex. And there was all these, it was like New Jack City. It had the whole complex locked up. But I had this one female was selling drugs for me. I would take it in there and she would weigh it and cook it and distribute and sell it. Little did I know. Her boyfriend was half dead. He'd been shot so many times by drug dealers. So one time I come in the apartment not, and the door was cracked open. So I pull out my Uzi and I cock it shh, and I put it on fully auto. And I said, hey, whoever behind that door, if you don't open right now, I'm going to just spray it full of bullet holes. So then he opens the door. I said, turn on the freaking light. He turned on the light. He said, man, do you know who I am, my man? I said, no, nah, I don't know who you are, but I'll tell you what, my man. Why are you in my dope spot? He said, oh, my girl lives here. I said, I'll tell you what, my man. Get your girl out here right now. We're going to have a problem. So he gets the girl out here. And she's like, oh, I didn't know he was coming, whatever, whatever. And she was telling me, oh, dude's cool. Because she had to tell him that because I wasn't cool. So I get in there. Dude opens up his jacket, bro. He has so many bullet holes in his body. He said, man, now I rob drug dealers, man. That's what I do. I've been shot too many times. They call me half this. I said, man, check this out, little homie. You ain't met nobody not me because I'll shoot you in your face, homie. So sit down. You might learn something. So what I'm trying to say, this is an intimidation factor, guys. He wants to show you where he's been shot and stabbed so you can have fear. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Get the frick out of here, man. My thighs, my hand, my toes, my knees, my legs, my back of my foot. Okay, guys, so what I'm trying to do in movies is called character recognition. For all of you ADHD dudes to be talking about get to the point, slow the frick down, man. You might learn some things, man. First of all, I want you to identify who this dude is. He was king. He's Philly King Kong. Like, he ran Philly, man. This is this is better than uh, this is better than the movie uh, Paid in Full. This is better than the movie Next Day Air. This is better than Carlito's Way. This dude was a straight savage, right? On the streets, he ran things. I got 20 savages out there, right? He running stuff. He's been shot. He's a bad dude. But I want to share with you, this is his brother, and this is the conversation he's having about what happened to his brother while he's in prison. So I just want to share with you, even the savage of the savages, bro, when you go to prison, it's a whole nother level of savagery, dude. Because, yeah, you're the king of Philly, but they got dudes from all over the country, bro, locked up behind the walls, man. 
So let's continue, my little felly, furry little friends. Can't get out the bed to use the phone. He can't get out the bed to check his head. He can't get out the bed at all. But he on the block. He on the block with my little brother, my cousin. So they kind of like taking care of it right now. Got to change it. So basically what happened, his brother is messed up, man. He got stabbed and beat up in prison, so he can't even get out of bed. He can't do nothing, but fortunately for him, he's on the same block. In prison, they got blocks, guys. Let's call them units. He's in the same unit with his, his other brother and his cousin, so they're looking out for him. When I was in maximum security prison, I didn't have nobody looking out for me but me, so my savage had to continue on to the next level. But what I'm trying to share with you youngsters, even the toughest street guys, man, when they get to the pen, they get beat up and raped and stabbed too, bro. That's just how it is because there's a whole nother level of savagery. You got decades of savagery in there, and you ain't nothing but maybe 19, 20, 21 running up in there with your little few years of savagery. Man, you ain't even ready for what's in there. I'm trying to tell you, youngsters. Let's continue on. Hey, yo, squad. What's the drill? Back with another video, man. On the last episode of the King of Philly Chronicles, the King Kong of the streets, A.R. Ab, was sentenced to 45 years behind bars. His time in prison hasn't been a cakewalk, though. He's been stabbed, mistreated, and beaten down by the system. And his once death row status label is also losing footing and warring with each other since he's been gone. So this is what I'm trying to say to you guys, man. Like, you know, instead of trying to be tough, you should try to be smart because this is what I learned when I was in prison. I'm going to tell you what I learned in prison, dude. And this, is what I, this is my philosophy going in. I was already a national level power lifter, uh, no, an international power lifter, a national level bodybuilder, and I was a man, an international level martial artist. So I was a savage in my own right. I just happened to get on drugs and I was on the shooting spree, bro. I just got really enamored with weapons. But my lifestyle prepared me for that. What I'm trying to say to you guys, instead of trying to be the savage of the savage, when I got to the pen, I quickly realized there was dudes way bigger and way stronger, way more savage than me. And the only way I compensate is I rose my level of savagery to a level of barbarism that they weren't, they weren't uh, prepared to deal with because I was disfiguring dudes because of my level of training. But those of you who aren't trained like me, instead of trying to be tough and trying to be the king of everything, dude, why don't you just go ahead and build you an empire where you get your money right? So whether you're doing illegal activities, learn to clean that up, go to school, get an education, learn how to build a business, man. There's so many ways to get businesses. I'm not trying to turn this into a preachy video, but all I'm trying to say, dude, even the baddest, toughest, hardest dude on the street is nothing but a kitty cat behind those walls. So before you go to take that next trek, man, and you want to just find out, man, that you're not built for that, guys. You want to go ahead and learn that it's better to be a square because squares, man, you have a good life. And then in your own mind, you can rationalize that you're savage because the true savages are locked up behind bars, man.